What is going on guys, JD from New York here, and I'm coming at you this week with your WWE news and rumors, as always, for the week ending March 10th, 2013. Now, this week was a big week, not in terms of the amount of news that I'm going to be reporting to you guys, but the magnitude of the news that, uh, that happened this week. Uh, and uh, if you're living under a rock, you would know that uh, the one and only Paul Bearer, uh, passed away this week, and uh, you know I'm sorry to be saying that, because uh, I was reading the the news article the night it happened, and uh, I was just in complete shock. I really didn't even know what to think. But uh, as for the news about Paul Bearer, I, you know I don't know who you, who you guys listen to out there on YouTube for your news and rumors. Hopefully I'm your number one source. But if you guys have uh, read the dirt sheets or the news sites, um, like I do uh, on a daily basis, you know that uh, William Moody was his real name. Uh, he was obviously the manager for The Undertaker. We all know that. We all know the backstory to Paul Bearer. Uh, he openly had told people that he, he, uh, he hasn't been feeling well uh, before he passed. Uh, he recently, uh, before he passed, pulled himself out of some regular independent bookings uh, because he did not feel well. Now, uh, the last few tweets that he, that he posted out on Twitter were back on March 2nd. He reportedly uh, passed away at 5 p.m. Uh, on, uh, I believe it was uh, Tuesday evening. Uh, he would uh, he would have been 59 years old um, next month. Uh, he was under doctor's care before he passed uh, and was on medication for an infection, um, and he felt very weak. Uh, and he, uh, he attended some of the independent bookings that he was uh, scheduled to appear in in a wheelchair. And I didn't know any of this stuff. I didn't know he, that he was in that bad of health. Uh, there was... Uh, also, a news article on TMZ uh, that stated just three days before Paul Bearer, a.k.a. William Moody, died, he complained he was suffering from a blood clot. Uh, that was actually uh, uncovered by TMZ. Uh, and then uh, this in individual by the name of Cowboy Brian Kelly. Uh, he is the president of a prominent wrestling society called the Cauliflower Alley Club. Uh, he told TMZ that he last saw, uh, last saw Paul Bearer on March 2nd at a club reunion. Uh, this guy said that uh, Paul was in bad health with a severe breathing problem. According to uh, some people at the event, Kelly was, uh, was coughing and had trouble breathing and standing on his own for long periods of time. Uh, that's, what, that's what this guy Kelly said about Paul Bear. He told people that he was going to uh, seek treatment for what he called a respiratory issue. Uh, that was William Moody's case. Um, I really don't know what to say about this. Uh, there was also more news earlier in the week about his death. Um, after news broke on Tuesday about his death, um, there was a push among some WWE higher-ups to get him inducted into the Hall of Fame for uh, this year's class of 2013. Now, my opinion, and I wrote this out in my news, I always write my opinions so I have, uh, to have them to you know, reference when I bring you guys news and rumors. I really, I really didn't know what to think when I read this story like I stated already. Uh, I had just finished shutting off my PlayStation. I was, uh, you know, playing the new Metal Gear Rising video game, and I had shut it off for the night. I was getting ready to go to sleep and, you know, get up early for work. Uh, and it was just sudden. I just read the news article before I went to bed. I had no idea he was in bad health, uh, but I feel incredibly sorry for his family uh, and his friends and colleagues in the wrestling industry. I, I always hate to say goodbye to people I've grown up watching, uh, that were an important part of my childhood growing up. I just turned 31 this year, uh, and the WWE has been a huge part of my life for more than 25 years. I cried a river of tears when Owen Hart passed away, when Eddie Guerrero passed away, when Chris Benoit did what he did. You know, I, I, uh, I have a love for the wrestling industry that really none of my non-wrestling fans can really understand. I grew up watching Paul Bearer and The Undertaker. Undertaker is my favorite wrestler of all time. This shows you how precious life is. This shows you how you need to enjoy yourself and just live life. Every time I hear something like this, it makes me think. And, I, and like I said, I really can't say much on this because I don't know where to begin. Um, all I can say is that my prayers uh, go out to everyone affected by this tragedy and that Paul Bearer will never never be forgotten. Uh, he should already been in the Hall of Fame. I don't know why you know WWE waits for something like this to happen when you have such a legend 
who's uh, already retired from the wrestling industry, from the WWE. I don't know why he wasn't in the Hall of Fame to begin with. Uh, and uh, I, I firmly believe, and I strongly believe, that he, he deserves to be there. And like I said, not because of his passing this week, but because he's without a doubt one of the greatest managers we will ever see in the business. He managed one of the greatest superstars ever, The Undertaker. I can imagine how Taker feels right now. But my prayers and my thoughts and everything goes out to everybody affected by this. Uh, and uh, like I said, he will never, ever be forgotten and gave us a lifetime of memories that I will pretty much take to my grave when, uh, when it's my time to go. WrestleMania 29 news, guys. I have uh, news on WrestleMania 29. The likely Ryback... Versus Mark Henry match for WrestleMania 29 is largely designed to actually let Ryback get a win on pay-per-view. It appears that the idea of Ryback turning heel has been dropped for now. I like this match. I like Henry versus Ryback. I love Mark Henry as a heel, and I really enjoy Ryback's intensity. Those two aspects mixed, in my honest opinion, would definitely be a WrestleMania-worthy match. If Henry stays healthy... He will have a monster year, without a doubt. And I hope it, you know, it means another world title run for Mark Henry on SmackDown. A loss to Ryback would not do anything to Mark Henry's character. So giving Ryback the impressive win at WrestleMania here seems like the best possible outcome for him so they can continue to build him to his possible world title picture for Ryback and Mark Henry, hopefully, in 2013. Jack Swagger versus Alberto Del Rio will be continuing their WrestleMania 29 uh, feud as a submission match, which is planned for the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. This is nothing new. I already knew this was going to happen. Uh, the Extreme Rules pay-per-view um, usually is WrestleMania rematches with stipulations. Uh, there was news on The Rock possibly making an appearance at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. That was also reported this, uh, this week. The Rock is not finishing up with WWE. He's got a few more dates after WrestleMania. Uh, and he will most likely be at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. In what capacity, I don't know. We're just going to have to find out and watch. But Jack Swagger vs. The Real will continue at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. The Rock will be at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, so we'll have to find out what role he plays in that. It was reported in January that WWE's creative team had plans for Randy Orton to turn heel following numerous requests from Orton himself. Figure4WrestlingOnline.com reports Wednesday that plans for Orton to become heel again are still in place. And that is, it is going to be expected to take place after WrestleMania. I don't mind Orton's character, but I'm sure all of you can agree with me that his face character has pretty much run its course and that he will be better off as a heel. I look forward to this happening when it finally does, uh, as the potential for possible fueled, feuds are very nice. Uh, Orton versus Sheamus, Orton versus Ryback are just uh, two guys that I would like to see him feud with. Uh, those are all possible and probably going to be on the radar for later in 2013. WWE has confirmed that Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman will respond to Triple H's WrestleMania 29 Challenge this coming Monday on Raw from Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, Triple, H is, Triple H is also scheduled to appear on that show. Uh, this was obvious. Uh, Lesnar is booked for most of the Raws between now and WrestleMania to build that feud with Triple H. Undertaker is also scheduled to appear to continue the storyline with CM Punk after his win on Monday in the Fatal 4 match to finally challenge The Undertaker at WrestleMania 29, so look forward to that. Monday Night Raw rating for Old School Raw was a 3.54 uh, and averaged 5.018 million viewers. Raw did 4.9 million viewers for the first hour, 5.2, a big jump in that second hour, and then went down uh, to a 4.8, which has uh, been the trend for the third hour, uh, 4.8 million viewers for that third hour. Other news I have here, as seen on Monday Night Raw, Road Dog Jesse James and Billy Gunn, the New Age Outlaws, reunited to defeat Primo and Epico. In a Raw active video, Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow requ requested uh, a, a challenge to the New Age Outlaws. They knocked the New Age Outlaws and issued a challenge for next week's Raw. As of right now, I just read the match will take place, the New Age Outlaws versus the Road Scholars on Monday Night Raw. That should be a, an excellent match, tag team match on Monday Night Raw. It's going to be great. Obviously, the Outlaws still have it. I'd like to see them actually get one more run for the World Tag Team Championships and possibly go for the titles uh, and bring some prestige back to those straps because I think they're kind of being diminished right now in the hands of Kane and Daniel Bryan. You know, there's not many tag teams right now in the WWE again. Uh, 
Damien Sandow had a segment on Monday Night Raw, if you remember, for Raw 1000, where he uh, was obliterated by Triple H and the rest of D-Generation X. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember that, but that's probably going to tie into this in some way, or probably does, because Sandow issued the challenge to the New Age Outlaws. Word coming out of Monday Night Raw is that WWE no longer wants Ric Flair doing anything really physical. While he threw some chops at Biggie Langston on Monday Night Raw, uh, don't expect him to take any bumps or get into any brawls on WWE TV. There is some sort of health issue that WWE is concerned about with Ric Flair. The feeling is that they would rather be safe than sorry. I don't blame WWE for this. Flair is in his mid-60s. Uh, we definitely don't need any more scares after what happened with Jerry Lawler and his heart attack on TV and now with uh, the health that we found out about uh, with Paul Bearer. Uh, Flair should simply be in a corner uh, you know, promoting a superstar or a manager at some point with somebody. I don't know, but he, he should not be, be doing anything physical. And I'm glad the WWE is taking the proper precautions with Ric Flair. The Miz vs. Antonio Cesaro is said to just be a TV feud to give them something to do between now and WrestleMania 29. While The Miz and Ric Flair continued their angle together on Raw, word is that we should not read too much into that. And that um, the thing to really think about is why Dolph Ziggler has not been uh, on TV often and has actually has been on a losing streak uh, and has gotten very limited interview time. And he didn't even get an entrance on Monday Night Raw this past Monday. The WWE really hasn't gotten, uh, really hasn't given me any reason to care about The Miz or Antonio Cesaro, especially, especially Cesaro, uh, since they have him booked to lose several weeks in a row. Um, they're taking away from his momentum uh, just a little bit. Uh, he should be winning. He's the U.S. champion. He should be winning matches and look, being looking strong. I'm more concerned about Ziggler. Now, Ziggler is a guy I am invested in. I have invested my time in the Ziggler character and to see him progress as a superstar. You know, I've been patiently waiting to, you know, for Ziggler to finally break through and be given that chance. He is one of the best guys in the company, and they have, you know, kind of lowballed him several times over the past two years. He doesn't even have a clear-cut spot on WrestleMania 29, and uh, meanwhile, he he should definitely already be in a feud and booked for that event. You know, he's been one of your top superstars for the last year and a half now. I don't know what they're waiting for, but at this point, I just don't have any faith in WWE Creative to do anything special. Uh, and I firmly believe this WrestleMania build, like I've stated already, has been very lazy and very uninspired. And you can just tell by the way WWE's booking Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler's been one of your top guys throughout most of last year and going into this year. He looks strong in the Royal Rumble. you got to build off that. You can't have him just floating around with that briefcase. Either have him cash in the briefcase, you know, get rid of that, give him the championship, or you, know, or you have to keep him looking strong on TV. You can't have him just not doing anything. He's too important right now. He's your future. You have to feature him on TV. You can't have him waste away, and you got to give him something, something important for WrestleMania. You just have to. He deserves it, and he belongs in the spotlight. But that's the news and rumors, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. A lot of it had to do with Paul Bearer. Uh, like I said, my thoughts, and, my thoughts and prayers go out to everybody affected by Paul Bearer. I'm going to miss him severely, um, and he gave us a ton of memories that we could uh, look back on and remember. Uh, but that is this week's edition, guys. Not much news besides the death of uh, William Moody, a.k.a. Paul Bearer. I'll be back on Monday, as you know, for uh, Monday Night Raw and my review on Tuesday morning. So look forward to that, as always. I'm out, guys. If you enjoyed the commentary, hit that like button, subscribe. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this week's news or, uh, you know, what you think about the passing of uh, Paul Barra this week. So I'm out, guys. I'll talk to you all on Tuesday morning. All right. Take care.